Hello everybody, this is Dr. Brandi Maynard. I am thrilled to be able to walk side by side in you on this journey as you're learning how to take teaching skills that you do regularly in a face-to-face -face environment and move those skills online. Today we're talking about the strategy Think, Pair, Share and how we might move that to an online platform. Let's get started. What problems would you face if you did not have a video conferencing platform like Zoom to reach your stu students during this pandemic? In a moment, you're going to answer that question in the chat area. Then your host is going to bring you back and you're going to have an opportunity to discuss some of the answers that came back to this question. All right, let's get started. Pause the video. I trust that you had a rich discussion about some of the problems that you would face if you did not have a, a video platform. Let's try Think, Pair, Share in an online environment to see what it looks, sounds, and feels like. First, think about the teaching strategies that you currently use in the classroom. Which ones do you suspect might transfer into an online environment? Here are a few examples. The one that we're talking about today, Think, Pair, Share, the Jigsaw Method, Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Take a moment now to jot down as many strategies as you can think of that might transfer into an online environment. Go and please press pause. All right, welcome back. Well, let's try it. We're going to move into the pair portion of the Think, Pair, Share activity. In a moment, you'll be pushed into a breakout room by your host for three minutes to discuss your thoughts with a partner. The person with the darkest hair will go first. Please make sure your audio and video are on in the breakout rooms. This is meant to be a dialogue between the two of you and if you cannot see and hear each other, it's not going to work. When you come back, be prepared to be pulled into the main room when the time is up, there's nothing that you need to do on your end, and come back prepared to share your favorite idea with the rest of the group using your microphone. All right, in a moment you're going to be pushed out and go. Please pause the video. Welcome back. I hope you had an interesting and exciting engagement with your partner around the ideas of teaching strategies that you might be able to use in an online environment. Now it's time to share your favorite idea with the rest of the group using the three and out strategy. This is my favorite strategy and people always say to me, Brandy, I know that I'm gonna be called on in your sessions and you're going to keep me on my toes and it's always going to be engaging and that's because I use this strategy. So the way that this strategy works is your host will call on the first person to take the microphone and share. That first person might be Phil. Phil will take the microphone, he'll share his ideas, and then he will call on the second person which might be Clint. Clint will take the microphone, he will share his ideas, and throw it off to the third person, Christy, who will share her ideas. Once Christy's done, she will pass the microphone back to the host. Once those three people have shared, the host gets the microphone back and then asks everyone in the room to share their favorite idea in chat. All right, we're gonna go in just a moment. Here we go, three, two, one, share. Please pause the video. If you're using Zoom and in many other different video conferencing platforms, you have the opportunity to take that chat that you just did and print it. So take a look at printing chat. I'll have some information for you on the next slide on how to do that because then you can print these activities, these ideas, these questions, these strategies, whatever it is that you're working on, and you can use them and share them later. Let's take a look besides that best practice at a few others for virtual think pair shares. The first is to pause and pose thoughtful questions. This is really important. You don't want to be posing yes and no questions. You want your students to really think about what it is that you are about to discuss during the unit. Next, allow for think time. Usually I use about 60 minutes or 60 to 90 seconds in order to do this. You decide what's best for your learners and allow that think time. Third, once the opportunity begins, join the breakout rooms and encourage conversations. You'll move from breakout one to breakout two to breakout three, and you will just float in between those breakout rooms to make sure the conversation is rich, the dialogue is moving forward, and so on. If it's not, ask for someone to step up and take the lead. 
Number four, be responsive when students need help. Within Zoom, there's a question and answer feature and they can also in the bottom ask for help. If they do, you will get a pop-up screen that says help is needed in breakout room four and you can move into breakout room four and offer that help and assistance. Try to do it as quickly as you can. Number five, three and out increases engagement and accountability. When people experience three and out, they know that there's an opportunity that they're going to get called on, which is great because that increases the accountability. Notice that everybody had the opportunity to answer. So not only the three people, and those were random, not only the three people got to answer, but everyone got to share their answers in chat. This increases the accountability and then gives you an opportunity to check for understanding. Now your host is going to lead you through a debrief. There are a few questions that we're going to debrief on. The first one is how might you use this in an upcoming lesson? This is where you're, you will share some of your ideas in the chat area. Remember the chat can be printed out afterwards so you can learn from one another. The next two are discussion points, and this is something that your host is going to discuss with you. The first one is, would you need to use pairs or could you use larger groups of three or four? If you use larger groups for this activity, what things do you need to keep in mind in order to make sure that it's successful? All right, in a moment you're going to go. And go. Please pause the video. Last but not least, now it's time to take action. I have two action items for you. The first is to write one to three thoughtful questions you might use in your next teaching session. Your host can decide if they want those questions sent to them. If you wanna share it with a PLC group member or another colleague, just to get some feedback, that might be an excellent idea as you're beginning this online journey. And the last action item is to watch the video below on how to use breakout rooms in Zoom. Once you go to this video, you will see inside of the Zoom support that there are many other Zoom videos that you could watch. I encourage you to go in there and watch these videos to get some more ideas on how to use Zoom successfully. These are more technical ideas on how to use the platform. What you'll get from me is more ideas on how to increase engagement using different teaching strategies that you're familiar with. Well, I have a word of wisdom for you, and I'm sure that your host will also have a word of wisdom with you as this person closes today. But my word of wisdom is, you know how to teach, and I encourage you to lean on that understanding. The difference is the method of delivery. Some of you are new to the teaching field. Some of you have been teaching for 25 years. I know when I started, I was, oh, probably about six years into my teaching experience when I started working virtually. And it was like drinking from a fire hose. It's very different than anything I'd experienced before. The reason is because I was teaching to a group of students and looking at a blank wall as I was doing it. I didn't have that body language from them or any type of reaction from them when I was doing this. Now note, this was before video cameras, so they did not have an opportunity. I didn't have an opportunity to see their faces, but I knew how to teach and you know how to teach. Lean on that understanding and then take the time to learn the different delivery method. For many of you, it's going to be Zoom. For others, it might be Blackboard, Collaborate, or New Row. There are lots of different video options out there. Check them out, have fun, lean into your discomfort, and do the best you can. Your students need you. Thanks for your time and attention. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Bye for now.